Oh. Well, welcome again to everybody. I hope you all had a good Thanksgiving. Because mm. Katie had to. Um, just like she woke up sick. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Katie. Oh, no. All right. Well, I think we all know each other, except maybe I'm Betty new. is I'm a new, new to this group. But I'm not here to sing jazz. <laughs> no. So, Betty, we have uh, Katie, who's been with us most of the classes. We have Heather, who joined us the first week of the classes yeah. and has right. been, uh, I think, every single yeah. one. Yeah. Heather. Yeah. 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 Yep. Heather. Okay. Hi, Heather. Hi. And Pauline, do you, uh, you might know Pauline. I know Pauline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then this is Chris, Chris who's so. been to several of the classes. Mm -hmm. And then you probably know Matthew. Matthew. Mm -hmm. And you know Pat yeah. and I. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, Betty is our junior warden. Now, for those of you who don't know, um, this is uh, now we're now talking about just St. John's this week. So um, the Episcopal churches, we have what is called a vestry. It's like our board of governors. We have 12 members. They are parishioners, just like all of you. Um, <laughs> and um, they are elected by their fellow members to serve on the vestry um, and there's like three groups <laughs> of four so each year four are elected and they serve for three years so there's a constant rotation of people so we have fresh eyes mm -hmm. fresh ideas fresh voices every year. Um, we try and keep a good balance of ages, genders, socioeconomic, um, backgrounds, as much diversity as we can, bearing in mind, you know, who we are. We don't actually have a big, um, we have some diversity in some areas, but we don't have a lot of diversity in terms of race. We don't, you know, we are in a more affluent area of St. Paul, but we try and get as much diversity as we can within what, within our own community. Um, and, um, and we also try and get diversity across the ministries, because we do have a lot of ministries going on here. We have something like 40 ministries. So we do try and make sure we've got voices from our Older ministries, uh, like our, we call um, owls, older, wiser laity, um, and we try and make sure we got voices from our children, youth, and family ministries. We try and make sure we've got um, rep representation from our faith formation ministries, such as our education. We try and make sure we've got representation from our spiritual life groups. So there are men's groups, women's groups, LGBTQ groups. Um, we make sure we've got pastoral care, which is obviously a big ministry of the church, liturgy groups, music groups. So we try and make sure that we've got a good voices from everywhere because this is the group that they discuss major policies and they will vote on major policies. They oversee the finances so they will decide the budget for the year and of course where your treasure is there's your heart and there's not a lot you can do with that money so that's the overarching board and then the wardens are like the chairs of the board can i just interject something yeah warden comes from an old english term which is, shouldn't be a surprise since it's anglican church meaning keeper of the keys that's why at the prison they call them the wardens too uh -huh. So it's it, and what it means is that the rector is kind of in charge or entrusted with this care of the spiritual life of the community. The wardens are entrusted with keeping the lights on, keeping the bills paid, um, setting policy for the building and the ground, you know, making sure that this 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 physical space is used um, in ways that are compatible with the mission and that we're able to fund the mission that we have. Right. Uh, I was just gonna <laughs> so yeah so the way we do it is um we have um a junior warden and a senior warden and each of them serve two
two one-year terms. So um, you'll be elected for a year and then re-elected for a second year. And we ask them to serve as junior for two years and then senior for two years. And we usually ask people who were previously vestry members so that they have experience of how this works. And then they chair the vestry, which is the board of governors. And then also on the vestry is a treasurer. The treasurer is elected by the vestry um, and they oversee the finances. They're not a voting member of the vestry. And then there is also a clerk of the vestry. So like a secretary of the vestry, they are also elected by the vestry. They are also not a voting member, I believe. Right. Yeah. Um, and then the rector sits on the vestry again, I think not a voting member, but, um, and they meet, that whole group meets once a month. <clears throat> the vestry meetings are open. Anybody can go, we try and keep it very transparent. If they are discussing something sensitive, say there's a personnel issue or something very sensitive, they will go into a closed session, but that does not happen here very often. I don't recall it ever happening, except maybe once. I think it's happened, I'm, I'm aware of it happening once. Yeah. Um, but um, <clears throat> but any of them every month, um, the minutes come out and they are posted on the notice board. Um, We've talked about maybe putting them on the website, but we don't necessarily want it to be open to the public, but we never hide them from parishioners, you know? Um, so we try and keep everything very transparent. Um, once a month, the finances come out as well, and they are distributed to the vestry members and to staff and any key lay leaders that are involved in budgets. So again, we try and be very transparent um with how things are running and um that's kind of just the logistics of it but Betty is here to kind of give us more about what Betty was saying about how the work she does and oh and then there's the executive committee so the wardens the rector and the treasurer act as an executive committee so because the vestry only meets once a month they are there as kind of a smaller contingent for the day to day. So if something comes up between the monthly meetings that needs a quick executive decision or you know anything like that, we go to the executive committee as staff members and if they feel like it needs to go out to the wider vestry, they will send it out by email or if they feel like it's okay for them to make a decision, they'll make a, a smaller decision because trying to get out to 16 people for a quick decision that might be okay to just make, then yeah, they do that. So we do have a, we don't limit ourselves by being so bureaucratic, you know, we have to wait a whole month for a simple decision. So I think that's the kind of logistics of it, but yeah. Betty is here to just talk about the governance of the church. And if you have any questions about the governance of St. John's. Yeah. Please talk to Betty. I think Sarah, you just did a great uh, encapsulation of <laughs> what the vestry does. There's uh, just um, to clarify a little bit further. Not not every member of vestry represents a particular area of ministry. There are a couple of folks that are just at large members, um, but we try to make sure that some of the more larger, comprehensive areas like music or children, youth and families or pastoral care has someone at the table who is involved in that ministry who can um, speak to it and, and let the rest of us know if like, for example, I'm not very involved in music ministry except as a person who appreciates it very much. But you know, if there's issues that we as a vestry need to be aware of like um, impending issues with instruments for example, that are gonna require some investment. It's that kind of thing. And um, Vestry meets once a month. Um, we always start with a you know, time of reflection and prayer. Um, and then uh, kind of review reports of different commissions that 
sometimes people will submit them in advance so that we don't need to necessarily talk about them, but we might be reviewing minutes of uh, the pastoral care ministry or or faith in action, something else. And, and as Sarah said, it's mainly just governance and um, transparency is one of our biggest concerns. Because um, there's, you know, this is a this is a, a parish with a lot of resources. We have financial resources. We have um, a lot of very talented and gifted people. Several are sitting in this room. <laughs> Matthew, for example, I don't know if you noticed. Matthew is always at the at the door to welcome and greet people, um, and at the farmers market. And your gift of hospitality is really something that makes a huge difference in this community so and Kat I think I sent you an email last week saying you've got a great gift in your face and you never see it because you're on the other side of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. It's true. and Sarah is just beyond description you must not get hit by the bus yeah. <laughs> it does so many things so and of course, we are blessed with wonderful preaching and clergy. And um, I think it's, I'm just feel really grateful to be part of St. John's and part of the leadership at St. John's. So I don't really have anything else to add to that other than to encourage you folks that are kind of checking out the church and new and interested in what it's all about to, the best way to do that is to just get involved in something. And there's tons of opportunities to get involved in so many things here and just try it out see if you like it um if you have questions about well how might i get involved in this thing or that thing please just talk to me talk to sarah talk to cat we can steer you in the right direction anybody have questions yeah and i would echo that back we i, I feel like we have a just a great Leadership, um, Bestry, I'm just impressed with how thoughtful they are. And um, I appreciate that they, you know, as well as being, you know, looking at the practical, looking at the financing, looking at how sustainable we are long term as well as right now. But they do take the time to pray together and to, to think about the spirituality of and remember what we're here to do, that we're not run like a big corporation, but we are. A faith community and to remember that um yeah. i appreciate that because i left the corporate world for a good reason <laughs> and uh you know to remember why we're here and to remember our mission um is is very important to me so the only thing i would add is because <clears throat> i really feel strongly about this that the ministers of the church are awesome it's uh, in the it, Probably, I don't know if you're aware of this, but in the Book of Common Prayer, there's something in the back called the Catechism. And if you have a Catholic background, I was so happy to see this because I was like, oh, here it is. This is this, the, the Catechism is going to answer all my questions and tell me what the deal is. And it kind of does. Um, it's a, in a question and answer format. And the question, who are the ministers of the church? The answer is the very first answer a person in the answer is the lay people are the ministers of the church the ordained people are here to empower us and to inspire us and encourage us but the ministers of the church are us so when we come to a vestry meeting we're not looking at jared and saying what are you know tell us what you've been doing we want to tell each other what we've been doing and when cat gets up to do the announcements on sunday to me it, it, it's it's part of the liturgy it's telling us telling each other what we are doing as the church in the world. So that's it. Thanks, Betty. I'm going to hand these out. Um, so I'm here today um, to talk about the operations side, if you like, is, is the way we, we refer to it. So Jared and I, as staff members, we kind of split the work between us we it's hard to to put it into secular words so the words we choose is ministry is jared's area you know he oversees the liturgy and the pastoral care and faithful nation 
and I oversee what we call operations. Um, so uh, we don't want to call it business, it's not business, it's operations. And I'm going to be talking to you about the operations side of things with the exclusion of building. Um, we have an awesome building manager called Chris. I work alongside him. I'm not going to try and talk about his stuff, <laughs> but I'll talk about everything else that falls under operations today. And that does actually include a little bit of ministry because of cats work, which it, it really does fall under ministry. Um, but, you know, there's overlap. <laughs> um, so, um, as you know, I'm um, the parish administrator here. Um, and, oops, sorry, this converted from PowerPoint to the Google slides, and it looks like it didn't. Um, come over very well, I'm sorry about that. But how do I hide the floating panel? There it is, there you go. Sorry about that, so it didn't come over very well. Um, but I can get through it. Um, so I'm a parish administrator and I lead several teams. Um, my goal is to work collaboratively, collaboratively with Jared and other members of staff, the vestry, and um, volunteers to support St. John's vision, mission, ministry, and core values. So that's how I see my job. And my work is focused in six key functions of the organization. So I provide administrative, planning, and coordinating guidance and support. I'm always here to bounce ideas off, um, help figure out the best way to approach something, suggest people to connect with and make sure we are operating within applicable policies and laws. So unfortunately, I'm the one who has to say, no, you can't do that because we'll get into trouble, either with the policies of the church or within secular laws. So um, I don't like that part of my job, but that's what keeps us safe. <laughs> um, in collaboration with St. John's Treasurer, um, I provide financial guidance and support. To assist with this work, I lead two volunteer teams. One is the stewardship committee, and the other one is St. John's counters. The counters are on hiatus during the pandemic. Um, we are looking to reconvene them at the moment. Um, they, when they reconvene, they are the ones that count the offerings um, and do the banking. I also liaise with our contracted accountants. Uh, with the support from the personnel committee, I assist with hiring and administration of St. John's employees. So I oversee that. And in partnership with St. John's building manager, I mentioned Chris, I oversee use of our parish building and grounds. This includes facility use policies and requests, liaising with groups using our facility. We actually have a lot of outside groups as well as our own groups using the facility and coordinating special services such as weddings and funerals. That's why we've been in touch. Um, I also oversee St. John's communications and increasing media functions. And finally, I work with CAT on evangelism, hospitality, and member engagement. My greatest joy is working with three very talented and amazing colleagues um, in this work. And I'm sorry, this got a little over i'll have to do it on the google slide thing and straighten it out um so cat is the other full-time member of our team and cat oversees the live stream worship hybrid ministry uh media and then <clears throat> the, as you know they're the coordinator for access and connection and we use a model for that called invite Welcome Connect. Um, it's a model that was created by uh, an Episcopal priest called Mary Palmer, and it basically covers the function of evangelism, hospitality, and engagement. Um, and that we call it access and connection because it is about how people can access St. John's and it's affecting how we all connect with each other. Um, and Kat can tell you more about their job. Once you get to know them. Um, and then I work with Anna and Ellie. They each work about 15 hours a week. So they're pretty part-time, but they do amazing work. 
you will find Hannah in the parish office on a Sunday morning, and uh, they also work on a Monday, um, and maybe a few other hours from home during the week. Hannah, as I say, she um, covers the office for us. Um, she also does accounts receivable, so any money coming in, she um, bank, you know, banks that, puts it into our um, you know, QuickBooks, and then pays the bills, accounts payable, um, parish records, so just keeping a track of uh, sacraments records and things like that, baptisms and marriage records, things like that. Altar flowers, if you wanna um, have altar flowers, in memory of anybody or anything like that. She takes care of that, memorials, um, she takes care of that. And then Safe Church. So this is something, and this is something that the vestry, you know, this is one of the policies that is very important for the vestry um, to approve and things like that, is we are very, very strict about keeping our space safe. I'm not gonna say we're perfect, nobody's perfect, that's why, we need God, right? That's why we need grace and forgiveness because we're never going to get it perfect. But we're always trying to learn and we're always trying to do the best that we can. And one that's how what we call safe church. We use the national church and our diocese policy on safe church. And we have training classes um, that we as staff are mandated. We absolutely do. Lots of our volunteers, our vestry, and any of our policy makers are required to do it too. And lots of our volunteers, especially anybody that's working with children or vulnerable adults, are required to take the safe church classes. We also are required to do background checks, and we're required to renew every three years. And then Christians, anybody that wants to, we welcome. Please go to those classes, you know, um, and you'll find a packet in your folders that I gave you uh, that we hand out to everybody. Um, that just gives you um, some information on Safe Church. There's a code of conduct in there that we encourage everybody to read through. It's a very simple, I commit to behaving in this way, not behaving in that way. You can just put your initials on there, sign it, hand it in. It's a pledge you make to being part of this community. We, we don't force you to do it, but we just, we encourage people to just think about it because we want this to be a safe space for everybody. Um, so that's something that Hannah administers. She is the one who keeps track of all of that stuff and will chase people to make sure that their safe church is up to date. And um, so she's our safe church administrator. And then Ellie, Ellie actually works um, remotely. Um, she does all of our communications, so parish emails, if you've signed up for those, you get the Friday e-news, and occasionally there'll be a, a blast if there's important information that needs to go out. Um, the bulletin insert, the blue inserts you see every Sunday, um, the website, uh, bi-monthly, the magazine, I handed that out a few weeks ago. Um, postal mailings, every quarter we do a postal mailing telling you what's coming up. She also does a lot of IT development and any training and support on website. If you get involved in a ministry and you want to be their website person, she'll train you on how to do that, um, things like that. So they're the, the team beyond the building team. So they're all awesome. So reach out whenever you need anything. Um, and any questions about the team or what they do or anything like that? All right. Then something I wanted to talk to you about is membership. This can get a little confusing. I try to create a visual that might help, but let me know as we go if you get confused. So as you, if you were at one of the classes that talked about um kind of what it means to be part of the Episcopal Church you will recall that the Episcopal Church believes membership is a gift of God and the church's role is to welcome and nurture not to create barriers at St John's we take that very seriously our collect that we say together every Sunday proclaims that we may uh, that we may welcome all people into this community of faith that means 
sorry, anyone that is showing up by worshiping regularly, making financial contributions, volunteering at or through the church, attending programs or special events is considered part of the St. John's community. So you just are here and you're part of our community. As with most families, we would like to get to know each other better and acknowledge our relationship. You are all taking one of those steps to do that by attending these basics classes. So you are, oh, that did not work. So I go back. Sorry. Um, so you can learn about us and our faith and we can get to know you. We also invite you to register in our database. I talked about that last week. If anybody wasn't here, um, let me know. But I know several of you have already done that. So that's this part here. Um, and we do that so we can be in contact with each other. And soon and then next week, there is the opportunity to be officially welcomed to the parish during the Sunday service. And at that point, we recognize you as welcomed members of St. John's. That would be your official status. So anybody who wants to be officially welcomed will do that next week and then you will be official welcomed members of St. John's. Now, some of you may want to take your membership a step further and become official members of the National Episcopal Church. That would be moving from the blue box to the orange box. Um, as stated in the Book of Common Prayer, the church is the body of which Jesus Christ is the head and of which all baptized persons are members. So membership of the Episcopal Church is simply defined by baptism. No application, no screening, no dues. Just baptism. If you have been baptized in another Christian community, you can complete a letter of transfer. That, it, there is a letter of transfer in your packets. So you simply, if you have been baptized in a Christian community, doesn't have to be an Episcopal one, you can just fill that out and send it, give it to me, and we will attempt to transfer your records. Lots of other Christian denominations will transfer your records, no problem. Even some Catholic churches, the more progressive Catholic churches have done that. Sometimes they won't, that's fine. I always try and you'll be surprised at how many will do it. Um, if they don't, doesn't matter. There's lots of other ways we can do it. So we can baptize you as an adult, and we do baptism several times a year. I have a question. So, so I don't have a record of when I was baptized, but I am a me member of a Presbyterian church down in members of church a lot of places, but in all of my moving. But if I don't have a date when I was infant baptized, does that I don't have a date? Does that matter? I don't know. Let, let's fill out the form let me send it to them and see what i get back okay i always say just let's just try the transfer first see what we get back sure um and then we go from there um so depending on what we get back if we need to do anything else we can try baptism um that is great we love doing adult baptisms um we could also do an adult confirmation we do those as well um, several, a couple of times a year, we can do adult confirmations. Or what you can do is be to receive into the Episcopal Church. And that is something that people choose to do, even if they um, have been baptized elsewhere, even if we've transferred the records in. It is just where the bishop lays his hands on and officially receives you into the Episcopal Church. Um, so that you know, you are acknowledged as having moved from whatever other denomination into the Episcopal Church. And some people like to do that, right? Even if we have transferred your records. So there's several routes. Other question. Yeah, you just said some people like to do that, right? But I, I'm assuming you mean R-I-T-E. R-I-T-E, yes. 
right, not right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not correctly. <laughs> yes, they like okay. to they like to do that. Um, yeah, ritual. Ritual. Yes. yes. Right. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, just because you know it's important to some people to do that, and we don't insist on anything at St. John's. Whatever makes you comfortable. Some people, like I said, they just like being here. And none of this is important to them. That's fine. Um, in your records, you will just see active non-member. We just have to have that because every year we have to submit a parochial report to the National Church. To us, we don't we don't consider those people non-members, but that's how we have to classify for the parochial report. We still consider you part of our family. Um, then we have welcomed member, and then we have um, baptized member is the orange group. And then finally is the communicants in good standing. This is um, those members who are baptized, they regularly attend church and have been faithful in working, praying and giving for the spread of the kingdom of God. That's how it is defined by the National Church. Um, and that's this all comes from the parochial report that we have to submit every year. And so that's kind of the three designations that we have for membership. Like I said, at St. John's, everybody here is considered part of the family. But for some people, this is important. And so we honor what is important to you. And I will help you navigate this however you want. If this is important to you, it's not important to us. This is important to you, it's important to us, and we'll help you achieve whatever you want to achieve. So how involved does each layer, um, how involved can a person be in each layer of these things? In the, in you can be as involved as you want to be, but um, it's up to you, you know, which of these, if, if this is important to you to be a communicant in good standing, we'll help you achieve that. But we're not going to stop none of if you're not a communicant in good standing, it's not going to stop you from being involved. I'm church. saying if someone chose to be just in a church member, yeah, they still can be involved in different help out in different. Absolutely. Yeah. And even if somebody didn't do any of these, no, that wouldn't stop them. That, but yeah. The only point at which it might we might ask you is if you wanted to serve on the vestry. Right. Then I, we might say. That. We do need you to at least, you know, become a well member or at least become a baptized member. Right. Then we might, you know, we do need you to be. Yeah, I don't know what the bylaws say about the vestry members, but most many churches bylaws, and I should know this because I'm a junior ward and I'll look it up. But many churches do say that to be in order to serve on the vestry, you need to be a, you know, a contributor of record, even if it's five dollars. You have to be able to say that you contribute financially to the uh, to fund the mission of the church yeah. so so to serve on the vestry that we might you know but beyond that we don't we rarely look at the records to be honest but, you know we're not going to look at the records to check before we let you do anything <laughs> but some of that's important if you're working with children or if oh, you're working for the safe church well not just it. that but just knowing about the church and what how you want to teach, teach the Episcopal values. And... Yeah. Although going through these rights won't necessarily be true. That's true. It does. That's true. Yeah. That answers my question. Yeah. <laughs> because doing baptism and confirmation classes, right? a lot of it you've already covered. Right. Going through the basics, you've already covered a lot of that. Very true. Um, if you already have your baptismal records, do you still need to do the transfer thing, or is that something that like I could just bring in? You know, we could probably just bring them in. Okay. Yeah, we could probably just do it that way. If you prefer. Yeah, we could probably do that. Okay. This can take a little while to digest, so <laughs> you have another <laughs> sheet in your 
book that also is another way of looking at membership. So if you want to look it over, think about it, come back to me anytime. Let me know. Even if it's like a year or two from now and you're like, you know what? I've decided I want to do something. That's fine. Okay. So we talked about giving through the spread of the kingdom of God, which is a really nice way to move into stewardship, which is the other area I look after. And that is um, uh, also what we're in the midst of now is our pledge campaign. Um, so I am going to just talk to you briefly about stewardship. Um, so stewardship is uh, of our time and finances is the way that we make our faith tangible. We give out a gratitude for all that God has given us because there are needs that cannot be met without our help. And because it reminds us to trust that God will provide what we need. Every fall, right now we have a commitment campaign where we ask all members to let us know their intentions for the coming year. Uh, we would like to know what you think you will be able to contribute financially and of your time and talent. Don't panic. No one's going to hold your feet to the fire. Uh, we know this is just an estimate. However, having these estimates helps our leadership, the vestry, um, budget and plan responsibly for the coming year. Um, at this point, I'm usually asked questions about how much to give. Uh, it's a hard question to answer because it's so personal. It is dependent on your unique situation and your relationship to God, because that is what, it, what it's about, what you have been blessed with and what you can give back. Some people find that giving a proportion of their income helps them make giving back a, pro a priority. I also like to share our giving tree. Unfortunately, our giving tree is a little bit out of date. I have not had time to update it, but um it gives you an idea i like to share this because it shows you there is a diversity of giving at st john's from a hundred dollars a year to thirty thousand a year um, and that has actually increased up um, during the pandemic it's been amazing how generosity has just grown but actually there's also been people who've had to go down to ten dollars a year um, so there is a spot for everyone, and every donation counts. It's because there are so many donors that the middle tier contribute just as much as the upper ones. There is no expectation or judgment. All we ask is that you contribute something. Be a part of the impact our congregation has on the world. My best suggestion is to pray on it, consider your own situation, and for all you are grateful, maybe look at the gift tree and pick an amount that feels comfortable. Stewardship isn't just about money, it's also about volunteering your God-given time and talent. I handed out last week um, the spiritual gift assessment. Did everybody get that? I think yeah, I did it. Cool, that's great. How did you find it, Heather? Um, I thought it, I liked it. I've actually done something, a different one in the past, and I I like this one better because I don't know, I feel like it has more areas. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Great. Well, we can um, talk one-on-one -on -one if you want to talk through the, the results okay. you found and how you might want to apply them. Um, so, yeah, our mission invites you to consider how you have been uniquely formed so that you might show forth your service to God and your service to others. Where do your passions, values, and strengths meet the world's needs? This is something that is really key to our mission. We are a service-orientated community. Um, I love how Mary Johnson, in her witness this year, if you listen to it, referred to us as a pastoral community. I love that because I do think she captured us, right? That's, that is a big part of who we are. Um, so to help you discern, we've got this tool for you. There's lots of other tools. Actually, Betty has another tool called Shape. Um, so we have other tools. If this one didn't feel right for you, um, I'm sure Betty would be willing to share hers. Um, and um, we'd love to share, to help you with your findings from this. Um, myself, I'm sure Betty would be willing to sit with anybody. Our clergy would be willing to sit with anybody. 
um, and help you discern your findings and find a good place for you here. Like I said, we have something like 40 ministries here. So there is a place for everyone. It's just finding it. I would also say, try something. And if it's not right, that's okay. We can try something else. Um, sometimes it does take some trial and error to find your people <laughs> and your, your spot. Um, so we're just wrapping up this year's pledge campaign. I uh, would love for you to invest yourselves through the resources that God has given you, your energy, your prayers, and your money in this work to which God has called St. John's. If you haven't already, and I know some of you have, thank you. Um, but if you haven't, um, please complete a pledge card. There are some on the side, and, and you can leave them with me. Um, and get involved. We just are thrilled that you're still here, and we'd love for you to continue to get involved. Any questions on stewardship? Okay. I, I just will say that for me, stewardship has been the biggest challenge of my faith life. And it's been the area, area of the biggest growth and the biggest reward. I am going to be done on time, I think, but just going to wrap up. I have handed, I think, this out and the, the form, the handout is also in your packet, but ways for you to get connected to stay in touch with what's happening here and you know what's going on so we always get it as much as ellie and i like try and pump out the communication we're always i didn't know about that and uh, it just breaks our hearts <laughs> whenever we hear that um but that there's so many ways to find out what's going on so sign up for the parish email comes out every friday um if you can't find how to sign up let us know we'll get you signed up um there's a blog um that you can sign up for facebook you can uh, there's also instagram now i'm sorry we haven't got that one here yet there is instagram <laughs> have got that launched for us a while ago and um so we are getting getting with the 21st century we have <laughs> our youtube channel for not just services but there's also the faith forums on there the the recordings of this um so if you are interested you know in education and stuff like that that's a great resource um and then the website the website really is kind of the hub of where you'll find everything if you have trouble navigating it let us know we can give you a quick tutorial where to find things so um lots of stuff going on um and we're here to help we've met the team now at least from any any one of us four will gladly help you. All right. Anything else? So, did you say that is the um, the nine o'clock where there's the faith formation? Yes. Yeah, so is that on YouTube? That is. It's on Zoom okay. actually. Um, oh no, I meant. Um, is that a recording? It's of recorded it? and yeah. it's posted. Oh, okay. We usually try to email it to Monday. Tuesdays. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I do go to YouTube to watch different things. So yeah. So if you look on the YouTube channel, there's playlist. yes, right. there's a playlist that says YouTube. Faith Formation. Okay. Um, and that's all of the series are in the Faith Formation okay. playlist. Oh, mm -hmm. Check it out. Yeah. So the, the titles are all, um, usually just the dates and then in the description of the videos I might specify like which faith forum series it's a part of or okay. who's teaching it and stuff so that's how you can find them okay for you yeah I think knowing about the church and stuff and being here has helped me feel like I know the church and belong more just even just knowing about it you know okay. it helps a lot great thank you Thanks for all your work, you guys. Thank yeah. you. Any other questions about St. John? Well, it's coming up in, in the next few weeks. Lessons and carols with a reception afterwards. It's mm -hmm. going to be fun. And at the Chris Parish Christmas party. Yeah, that's that the, might be a fun like, way to get to mm -hmm. hang out what with is some the people. Parish Christmas party. December 10th. Oh, it's the 10th. That's right. It's oh, a it's Saturday. That's the carol thing, right? 
So uh, carols, lessons and carols oh, is the 18th. Oh. So the Christmas party is the one where it has like the chefs, the people making mm -hmm. food. Yeah. I thought there was caroling. Oh, yes. There there will be be yeah. So what's what the gonna... difference between what you just said? The, yeah, so the 18th. the 18th is lessons and carols. So that's a service in the church. Oh, so okay. It's like a choir. It's a more formal thing. Um, so they do some readings and then they sing. Um, well, there's a musical repertoire yeah. that is, yeah. it's not always the same thing, but it's not necessarily Christmas carols like we think of them. But it's, right. a, yeah, it's a readings from scripture and then music, and then there'll be a party, kind of a reception afterwards. Oh, okay. That's a little more, but more of a service than a, yeah. So what day of the week is that? That's a Sunday at four o'clock. Okay. The Christmas party is the weekend before, it's on a Saturday, and they'll be informal caroling so more of a sing-along right in the outside the fire pit you know um and then then we'll come indoors for um the little plate dinner, yeah, plate dinner. Yeah. i'm actually gonna bring my son because he's very motivated by food Food, yeah. caroling, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there yeah. there will be food after less, the lessons and carol service as right, well. Right, so right, yes. yeah. 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 right. Yeah. So I'll actually be at his dad's on that weekend. But, um, <laughs> yeah. So, well, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> See if I can get my daughter to come too. <laughs> She's also motivated by food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, my son is 14 and my daughter is 18. Oh, college yeah. student. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Her freshman year. Nice. And my son, um, during COVID, he just decided that he doesn't he doesn't want to go to church anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my son did that during COVID too. Yeah. He didn't want to go back to church after. He said, "I don't do church." Yeah. Well, he comes and does the live stream sometimes. My mm -hmm. son does the live stream. <laughs> but he did tell me that wherever church we go to, they must have coffee hour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and you guys do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, so next week is New Member Sunday. So at both services, there's an opportunity to be officially welcomed. Um, there's so during the service, you would be asked to stand up, and you would be there's a part of the liturgy where there's a blessing kind of thing on on you joining the church. Um, so if you are interested in being part of that. Please let Kat know. Kat needs your name so that we, we actually name you as members of the parish. Do you go up front or do you stay in the pew? I think we know we have people come up front. Usually people okay. come up okay. the front and then we yeah. have to ask you a bunch of questions about Anglican history. And <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty simple. Yeah, it's okay. very simple. <laughs> Yeah, just a way to for everybody to kind of see you and welcome you and say we're glad you're here. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. okay. well. And then afterwards, there's a brunch in here. Um, the soups and salad, I think Bob's doing. Bob's yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, so would love to have you join us in here, whether you take part in the service or not. We'd just love to to come and have soup and salad. But again, we'd love to know so we know how much to tell Bob to prepare. Um, and if you have any dietary restrictions, just let us know. Um, again, you can just let Kat know, and Kat will let Bob know. Um, yeah, so that's where we go from here. And then, as I say, after that, it's up to you, um, your next steps. If you want anything, need anything, please do be in touch. Um, Kat will probably be following up with you, touching base time to time. See how you're getting on if you need anything and um and you are welcome to reach out we also um would love to hear from you of how what you thought of basics um so i did my job yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um Pat and i um this is our first time leading basics and so we are thinking of Making, making a few changes. Um, so we'd love to hear your thoughts on it um, so that we can incorporate that. 
in. We kind of inherited the curriculum. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of really good stuff here, but we want to kind of get some feedback. Yeah. All right.